Now in other news, a spacewalk to repair the International Space Station has ended early after one of the astronauts reported a water bubble in his helmet. Both of the astronauts, the Britain Tim Peake and the American Tim Copra, on the spacewalk have returned to the station and they are safe. Our science editor David Shookman now reports. First British citizen to walk in space today will be his first spacewalk. A moment of exploration history as Tim Peake prepares to venture outside the space station. Through the course of the depressurization. Weightless but jammed into a bulky spacesuit, he needs his colleagues to guide him into the airlock. We hear him go through his final checks. The waist tether large hook is attached to the large hook of the airlock waist tether. There have been plenty of spacewalks before, but they're always hazardous. And at about one o'clock, it was time to float out. It was dark when he emerged, a tiny figure against the vast space station. Hey, Tim, it's really cool seeing that Union Jack go outside. This is explored all over the world. Now it's explored space. Thank you, Scott. It's great to be wearing it. It's a privilege. A proud moment. Hand by hand, Tim Peake and a fellow astronaut inched along outside. Yeah, Tim, that's perfect framing right there. We like that. Filmed by his American colleague, Tim Peake is perched at the very <laughs> edge of the space station, in position to help carry out a key repair job. But look how hard it is managing tools in space. This is the view from Tim Peake's own camera. Everything is weightless and wants to float away. All right, gentlemen, looking great. Glad to see you both out there together on the tip of the world. Stepping outside the International Space Station is always risky, but spacewalks are essential to build and fix things. Now, the astronauts emerge through an airlock here, and if we take a closer look, we can see how they had to make their way about 60 metres to replace what's called a sequential shunt unit. That's part of the power supply connecting the solar panels. So, how do they stay safe while they're out there? Well, their spacesuits have 14 layers of material to give protection from the vacuum of space and from temperatures ranging from minus 100 Celsius right up to plus 120. Backpacks contain oxygen, a power supply and water for life support. And in case the astronauts drift away, small thruster jets can maneuver them back to safety. The main task was to replace that power unit. They had to get it done within 31 minutes because that's how long night lasts on the space station and if sunlight hit the solar panels they could have been electrocuted in the event all went well okay that's a good position all four electrical connectors are good then a problem we know it's a small amount of water if, if there's any way to get a temperature of the water i don't know if you can move it around to get to that or to try to drink it and note the taste water was found in the helmet of tim peak's companion tim copra it's about uh, three inches above my head and uh, if I can make it mobile. They were ordered back inside. A syringe was used to collect samples of the water. This matters because three years ago, an astronaut nearly drowned in his spacesuit. This time, no harm was done, and the main repair task was completed. The International Space Station back to full power. We really appreciate all the dedication and hard work. But there'll be questions about what went wrong, and all of this is a reminder of the dangers of working in space. David Shookman, BBC News. Outstanding job, guys. Yes, it's good to hear that they are both safe and well.